Hey there, welcome to my kitchen. This is where the magic happens. Today we're gonna to talk about healthy recipes to make on the campaign trail. Now for me, what makes a good campaign trail recipe is it comes together quickly, it doesn't require measuring, and it doesn't require a lot of equipment. So today I'm gonna to show you how I make avocado toast, how I make my famous kale salad, and how I make what I call my cheater's chicken tortilla soup. Now a note, I'm calling these healthy. This is not a weight loss channel. It is not gonna be a weight loss channel. And I'm not a nutritionist. These are just the things that powered me and make me feel good eating throughout the day. You are not gonna have time or energy to make all of these things all the time. And I have lived plenty of campaigns off volunteer cookies and pizza. But when you do have the time, this is a great way to care for yourself by feeding yourself healthy fats, vegetables, and lean protein. So let's get started. What kind of millennial would I be if I didn't have an avocado toast recipe? I promise you though, mine is the best. I'm gonna leave this screen up for just a few seconds in case you need to gather ingredients or make a grocery list. The first thing you're gonna need, obviously, is your avocado. You're also going to want a clove of garlic. I like to use fresh. You can use pre-grated if you want. I'm gonna show you how I grade mine. You're also gonna want a nice sea salt. This is a little bit of an investment, but I make avocado toast multiple times a week, and this sucker has lasted me over a year, so highly recommend this Malden sea salt or whatever it is you prefer. Then you want your olive oil, whatever kind you prefer is great. Your lemon juice, or you can use fresh lemons if you have them on hand. You do want to buy a nice piece of bread. I really like the hearth breads and the sourdough breads that come pre-sliced at Whole Foods. One of the nice things about Whole Foods is that they're all over the country and their quality is pretty consistent. So it is a little bit expensive to buy fancy pre-sliced bread from Whole Foods, but since this is a toast-based recipe, you get what you pay for, so you want to invest in something delicious. You're going to cut your avocado in half and just smush it right into the bowl. This is a good check for how ripe your avocado should be. It should be bright green like this, but squishy enough to just smush it right in the bowl. Side note here, I am clearly not a food blogger. Look at that ring light reflected in my bowl and my catcher's mitt-sized hands. If anyone does have tips for videotaping yourself making food and making it more aesthetically pleasing, please leave them down below. You really want to use a good zester to grate your garlic because you want your garlic evenly distributed throughout your mash. The one I use I really like. It's from Everyday Living, and I'm going to put a link to where you can get it below. This recipe is based on the avocado toast I used to get at Grow, a coffee shop in Anaheim, California, where I was doing a congressional. So shout out to Grow. If you go there, I also recommend their lavender latte. Go ahead and use a spoon or your fingers to plop that right in there. And then you're gonna add your olive oil. As I told you, we are not measuring this recipe, but I would say start out with what looks about a tablespoon. And then you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with your lemon juice. Oh, I forgot to tell you in the beginning, you are also going to want red pepper flakes. Your mash already has a little bit of a kick to it from the garlic, so add these slowly. You can also add some on top of your toast at the end for a nice visual contrast. Same thing with your salt. You can always add more later, but you can't take it out once it's in there. Now you're going to go ahead and toast. This usually covers about one full large piece of toast, so two of these toast halves. I usually toast it on about medium in my toaster, but toast to your preference. While that's toasting, you're going to use the back of your fork to mash everything together to about a guacamole-like consistency. You're also going to want to taste, make sure that it fits your preferences, add more oil, more lemon juice, salt, pepper, and then you are ready to spread. One of the things I like about this recipe is it can be done without a kitchen. Even if you don't have a toaster in your campaign office in a pinch, you can always just put this on some bread. So I'm going to go ahead, spread it to a nice thickness, sprinkle with some sea salt, and bon appetit. Even if you think you don't like kale, I really encourage you to give this next recipe a try. I have converted many kale haters with this recipe. It's called Lincoln Kale Salad because it is based off a salad I used to have at a lunch place downtown in DC called Lincoln. You'll need a head of kale, any type that you like. If you do get your kale pre-chopped up, make sure you pull out the stems because they'll make your salad bitter. You're also going to want pine nuts, about half a cup. If you can't find pine nuts, you could use toasted hazelnuts or even walnuts. 
You're going to want to warm those up so that they release their natural oils. I'm just going to pop mine in the microwave for 30 seconds. You can also be fancy and warm them in the toaster oven. Just be careful. You want to keep an eye on them. Because of all the oil, they can burn really quickly. Next, you'll want your cranberries. Unsweetened is best, but really anything is fine. Your Parmesan cheese, which you can leave out if you want to make this vegan. Lemon juice and olive oil. I'm using a fancy bottle that I got in Greece, but store-bought is fine. Now that my pine nuts are back, I'm just going to start tearing my kale into bite-sized pieces, again making sure to leave out any veins or stems. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to give it a drizzle of lemon juice and olive oil. You can always adjust to taste later. And now here is the secret to a good kale salad. You want to massage that dressing into the leaves so they become less fibrous and start to break down into almost like a seaweed-like texture. Once you've got that nice seaweed-like texture, go ahead and taste your salad and adjust the dressing to your liking. Then you're gonna add your pine nuts, your cranberries, you can also use currants or raisins if you prefer, and your Parmesan cheese, and make sure you just incorporate them in among the greens. When I don't know what I'm in the mood for, this is the thing I always make and it never disappoints. You can pair it with salmon, grilled chicken, a veggie burger, or have it on its own for a satisfying lunch. When you're plating, make sure that you do dig down to the bottom because the cranberries and pine nuts tend to sink. Grab a fork, grab your bowl, and you're ready to go. This last recipe has the most ingredients, but it's also the easiest to assemble. Unlike the other recipes, this has a bunch of pre-packaged ingredients, so you're always gonna wanna pick the low sodium options because again, you can always add salt, but you can't take it out. And basically, you just put everything except the cornmeal, tortilla chips, sour cream, lime, and cilantro in the crock pot. The great thing about this recipe is that it's super adaptable. If you have extra vegetables laying around that you want to use, you can put those in there too. You'll see I ran out of chicken stock and I just used some bouillon and some water. You can really adjust this to your own tastes. One ingredient that might be unfamiliar to some people is Rotel. It's just diced tomatoes and green chilies, and you should be able to find it in either the international food section or the canned food section of your grocery store. But if you can't or don't want to, you can replace it with a second can of salsa. Once you've added all your ingredients, you're just going to mix them together, put the top on, and set your crock pot to high for five hours. Crock-pots are very forgiving, so if you have to step away for longer than five hours, no worries. But once at least five hours have passed, you're going to return to your crock-pot, remove the top, and carefully use two forks to shred the chicken in the pot. The soup is going to be very hot at this point, so you want to make sure that you don't splash yourself. Once you finish shredding your chicken, you're going to thicken up your soup by either adding a little bit of cornmeal or some crushed up tortilla chips. I used a very light hand in this batch, but if you like it thicker, you can always add more or you can add more corn chips when you plate. This is also a great time to taste your soup, add salt if you think it needs it, or paprika or cumin. Mine was perfect, so I skipped that step. Then you just wanna let everything mellow for about another 20 minutes to a half an hour. And when you're ready to plate, you're gonna drop some tortilla chips in the bottom of the bowl, ladle the soup on top, and then garnish with cilantro, lime juice, and sour cream, or whatever sounds good to you. I don't know about you guys, but I'm stuffed. If you try these recipes, if you have a recipe I should try, or you wanna see more, don't forget to put it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.